Resident Evil, Resi, was a game that defined an entire genre. It still is. I mean, the game is just it is magnificent. It's terrifying in so many ways. Back in 1996, I remember playing this game for the very first time. A buddy lent it to me at school, and I remember it had a 15 certificate on the front of the case, and I thought, this game has a rating. What? Like this was that was a that was a big deal. That was a thing that you, you just didn't see that very often. Not only that, you look at the cover and you think, right, there are two giant tarantulas on the front of this thing, cat scan brain shadows all over the walls, and a guy who looks remarkably like Poncho from Predator, who's not even in the game, but he's wearing combat trousers, so clearly he's in the military, and he looks like he's bricking it. This is gonna be scary. Really scary. And it really was. You know, Resident Evil is actually regarded as a game that repopularized the zombies genre in general. I mean, never mind defining survival horror. It was it was a new way of looking at zombies. You know, we'd seen zombies in movies, but not in game form like this. It, it just, suddenly zombies were the hot ticket again. Everyone loved the undead. Since then, it's gone on to become Capcom's highest grossing gaming franchise ever, TV shows, and a hugely popular movie franchise, which I think is the highest grossing gaming movie franchise ever. And it's actually the brainchild of two of the greatest, most legendary developers in gaming history, Shinji Mikami and Takuro Fukuwara. They obviously created Resi, but it actually started somewhere else. Sweet Home was published by Capcom in 1989, and it was a game that is widely considered one of the toughest on the Famicom slash NES. It's one of the craziest games uh, they put together. It's actually a, a movie uh, that this game is based upon. It focuses around this crazy famous artist who's got these fresco paintings that he's hidden somewhere in his mansion. One day, suddenly disappears. It's 30 years later, a team of documentary filmmakers come to the abandoned mansion trying to find these frescoes. And things go a little bit badly. Turns out they're trapped inside this house by a ghost of an unknown woman who threatens to kill them all. They split up, try to find a way out. The mansion's in danger of collapsing and is occupied by countless monsters. This is starting to sound rather familiar. Long story short, the team find a projector room. On this projector, they find a picture of two parents with a burning baby. It turns out that when the baby was two, it fell into an incinerator. And the mother, the ghost that's chasing you, is actually trying to kill people to be ghosts to play with her son in the afterlife. Ultimately, the woman doesn't forgive herself and she's trapped herself in this mansion and you've got to try and escape. It's just insane. And this was on the NES. Games like Kirby came out on the NES. And then there's Sweet Home. These guys are maniacs. I love it. It's Metroidvania-style exploration, the storytelling, the puzzles. It was, it was all there, the, the, the beginnings of what was to come. Q years later, where they want to create a brand new IP, Resident Evil. Now, they were going to call it Biohazard in the West. However, it was really hard to get the rights to use the name Biohazard. I think there was a band at the time or something. So they did this really cool thing. They held a competition amongst all their kind of developers that they worked with and said, right, someone come up with a name for this. You get the best name that we all vote upon. It's yours. And someone on the team came up with Resident Evil. And that's how we have it today. The person I'm hoping now is doing really well for themselves. They, they've kind of smashed it. And so let's talk about the plot of Resident Evil, which is it, it is actually pretty awesome. Like, I actually really like the plot for this. So all these bizarre murders are taking place outside Raccoon City, which has signs of cannibalism on the victim's remains. Cannibalism, mate! This is, this is crazy! Can we don't see cannibalism in video games at this point. That is, a, that is a game changer. Humans eating humans. We're invested. This is groovy. The Raccoon Police Department's Special Tactics and Rescue Service, STARS, Stars are actually assigned to investigate the murders and they split up into two teams, the Alpha Team and the Bravo Team. The Bravo Team is sent in first to try and find out what's been going on. Suddenly, nothing, nada, all the communication goes quiet. Alpha Team are sent in to find out where Bravo Team are. It is kind of like Predator. July 24th, 1998, the first scene, we get a real life dog attack. Like, this thing is so vivid, man. Like. These demonic, monstrous Dobermans just ripping apart one of the, the stars team. It's just, 
man, it's, it, it, it kicks off with a bang. Like, you don't expect that kind of thing to happen in the game, you know? You used to kind of press and start, and then there's a bit of, like, you know, da -da 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 -da, like, scrolled kind of, like, text about the backstory. We've got a live-action movie that's all pixelated and looks like crap, but it's like, there's a dog. A dog has eaten apart a person. A dog. Something that we all have at home. And there we go, it's just ripping a guy to pieces. And it's the Doberman, like, in the 90s as well. Doberman's when every movie is, like, the bad... The bad, the bad dog. It was always the bad dog, the Doberman. I'm sure some of them are lovely. This is when we meet our first two characters, Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. The two heroes in our story who kind of define a lot of what's to come in the series. I don't know if you're going to remember this. If you've played this game before, I, it, it's unbelievable. It is one of the most hilarious intros you're going to find in a game. Maybe ever. Chris Redfield Jill Valentine It's like an 80s cable network crap cop show with this weird like keyboard riff like someone just pressed the demo on like a Casio like electronic keyboard back in the day and it's introducing them all like their characters in like a street fighter it's you can see they've taken things from like popular culture like on telly, as well as from the games that they've they've kind of made. It's all just absolutely bonkers. But I love the fact that it's live action. You just didn't see that then. I mean, it's so pixelated and it's so terrible looking, but they actually got actors to play these characters, to see some of the hairstyles, some of the outfits. I mean, it, it defines the characters. Every character had their own personality and their own kind of like intro, <laughs> intro like video. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. I want to know what they're doing now. I'd love to find out what they're all up to. Oh, I hope they go to Comic-Cons. I'd, I'd pay for the actors to sign my chest in like a sharp or like a marker pen. I wouldn't pay much for it, but I'd, I'd do it if the option was there. After all this shenanigans, all these actors and everything that's going on, you then see some text slowly pop up on screen. They have escaped in the mansion where they thought it was safe. Yet... <laughs> Cue the game. Like, why not get the narrator who's been saying Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker? Why has he not gone? They go to a mansion. They thought all's great, but it's not. Why not get him to do it? Well, on this crappy text on screen, the only thing it has in common with the rest of the game is it sounds like the typewriter that you used to save your progress. That is it. There's no other reason to have it. I don't, it was a missed opportunity. That would have been awesome. This guy's voiceover is ridiculous, and it would have been so good. This is when something special happens with the characters that I actually love about this, this narrative. You actually get a chance to play two completely different story arcs, which at this time in, in gaming was not a thing that was common at all. You know, we're looking at the mid-90s here. To have two separate gaming experiences in the same game, uh, it, it opens up so many doors to the story and how you can understand it, and I love the fact that there is an immediately there's this replayability factor where it's like you finish the game with one character, you want to jump straight in again and do all over again with the other character. It's like two games in one. It's genius. You get some classic NPCs like Barry, Rebecca, and Brad. And then there's one that we all know about. Albert God Complex Wesker. The double-crossing son of a gun who basically is the nemesis of the entire Resident Evil series. Albert Wesker is actually the star's captain. He's the guy leading the charge for the Alpha team. And it's the fact that he's just, you know, he looks, he looks like Paul from Tekken. His hair is mad. The team are forced to take refuge in this mansion because obviously all the craziness outside with the dogs and such that are chasing them. They're in this abandoned mansion and then we really get to learn a lot about what's been happening at this place. It has the surface of this old home, but in reality, underneath the ground, some crazy experiments are going on. The company who are doing these experiments is the Umbrella Corporation. And all of this revolves around a really, really deadly virus, the T-Virus. The jumps in this game for me, the jump scares were just absolutely incredible. Particularly the, the kind of the, the opening five minutes. Oh man, we all know exactly what's coming. That bit where you first encounter a zombie is something that still haunts me now because I remember myself being like, you know, barely a teenager and playing this game 
But I probably was too young. To, yeah, I was too young to play it. And seeing this zombie just go, it was, oh, dude. Like, they brought a remake out recently. The remastered version came out in like 2016, I think it was. And they're the same thing. And it's still, it was great, but it was not the same as it was back then. You see this, this zombie turn its head and then the stars team member's head fall off, half eaten, down to the eyeball. And this thing being like, hey, I'm going to queue up. You've either chosen Chris at this point or you've chosen Jill to experience Resident Evil with. And they ultimately follow the same path. Skip will take a few little puzzle differences here and there, trying to get their way to the underground laboratory where this is all taking place. We're meeting along the way some of the most absurd creatures, not just zombies, but we're talking about mutated giant tarantula spiders like on the front cover. We're talking like mutant killer frogs called hunters. There's giant bees. There's, ki there's killer plants. I mean, the whole the whole place is just this biological horror house of, of awfulness. And you've hardly got any resources, again, taking from Sweet Home exactly the same parameters exactly the same gameplay where you are just struggling to survive and you've got like limited bullets it's just oh it's just it, that that adds so much to the horror aspect of it all it's so scary because you're thinking if i see something around a corner i just can't fight it i cannot take a knife to a giant spider fight it's just not going to work out in my favor whether you're playing as chris or playing as jill at the end of this horror house full of just the most audacious outrageous creatures and monsters and such you make your way down to the underground lab, the underground umbrella facility where real experiments are happening, the crazy, crazy stuff. And there we find out Albert Wesker is a double agent. Albert Wesker is working for Umbrella this entire time. His plan is to unleash the tyrant, this super soldier that Umbrella has been developing this entire time on the world to wreak havoc. And you got to take him on in a final boss fight. And it is absolutely brilliant. It's old school. He looks hideous. He's this giant creature. We're all familiar with the likes of the Nemesis in following Resi games. But this super soldier, the Tyrant, was kind of the beginning of all of this. It's, it's where it all started. In the final boss fight with the Tyrant, we're led to believe that Wesker's actually killed during that episode. And once you defeat the Tyrant, courtesy of a very cheeky bazooka, uh, you then realize that the entire place has had a self-destruct mechanism activated and you've got this timed finale where you need to leg it as fast as you can and try and escape this thing i mean it adds another element this kind of like this countdown where you've got to try and get to the, I, there, there's nothing i hate more than in, in games than countdowns i hate countdowns i hate timed missions it adds this element of pressure that you have to finish it quickly it's another way of getting people to <laughs> become very anxious this game left a lot of people very anxious we began the story with arguably the most insanely beautifully cheesy intro of all time and we end with an outro of the same caliber. You see the way that our characters are sat there in that chopper, like at the end of Predator. It, there, there's so many, there's so many things to take away from that. I would be shocked if they weren't inspired by that, because so much of it feels just like that. Even the front cover looking like Poncho, like I mentioned. I'm only really talking about this now, it really is dawning on me just how many comparisons there are to Predator. Like it really feels like that, but you get this ending and it's great. And speaking of endings, what's really great about Resident Evil as well is you escape this facility. We're led to believe that Wesker's dead. We've had this insane you know, T-virus fueled adventure slash survival horror game that's happened in this mansion and such. But then there's the element of four different endings. You free everyone, you do what you need to do, the game ends there. It's just a brilliantly crafted story. I learned a few really cool things about this game as well, uh, post it coming out back in the 90s. Like I learned that the actual pre-rendered mansion was based on the Outlook hotel from The Shining, which is pretty cool. And even Marvel Comics released a Resident Evil comic book in like 97. I had no idea that was a thing, but that's that's awesome. There were so many things in Resident Evil 1 that they brought in, which we hadn't really ever seen before. The doors, just walking from scene to scene and the loading screen was those doors going the, the, the anxiety of thinking what's behind this door. If there, there could literally be a zombie standing right there or it's an empty corridor. You then see the empty corridor and think, oh, thank goodness, there's nothing there. And suddenly, oh. <laughs> no! Every single footstep you took, you thought, is there gonna be something waiting for me? And that was just so captivating. Like I loved it. Probably the scariest thing about Resident Evil is how close 
to all of the enemies we are, the familiarity of it all. You know, zombies were humans are now dead, so humans. You've got dogs. We love dogs. I love dogs. And suddenly, they're all crazy, maniacal dogs that want to kill you. Same with spiders. Well, some spiders are dangerous, but still, plants and frogs and wasps. I mean, they're all just things that we know, but they've just been, like, mutated into these hideous forms. And that's what I think was most scary about it. Everything felt a bit too familiar, like it, it could actually happen. Like it felt, it wasn't like aliens. It wasn't something, you know, paranormal. It was real stuff. Resident Evil 1 is outstanding in every way, shape or form. It has defined the genre. It's created one of the greatest franchises in the history of video games. Survival horror as a genre would not exist today if it wasn't for Resident Evil. You wouldn't have your Outlasts, your Silent Hills, your Dead Spaces, your Alien Isolations. It all began with this game. I give Resident Evil an A. It's an absolute A. It's, it's perfect. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have done, please do like it, uh, share it as much as you can, and subscribe to the channel as well if you're brand new. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. Game over. That was more Jigsaw Killer, wasn't it? More Saw. Ah, damn it.